Hey everybody, in this video we're going to use the motion design tools boolean functions to be able to carve text out of another dynamic object. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the edit menu and check our plugins and of course we need motion design and so I already have that on. Uh, if you don't, you want to activate it and then restart. With motion design turned on, I created an empty level already and activated motion design for it and also created the default uh, scene, skylight, uh, process volume in the camera. I uh, didn't bother with the directional light, so I have this TL common level already set up that has these things from the defaults, and that's saved. And I'm going to use this as my camera and lighting for any motion graphics that I create in this project. So let's go ahead and create a text boolean level. So right click, uh, new level, it'll be empty. I'll call that text boolean demo. Enter, control S to save it, and double click to open it. All right, we'll activate motion design for this new level. And I'll go into my levels panel. If you don't have your levels panel, you can just go to window and activate levels right here. And then back in the content browser, I will be able to uh, look for my common level. Of course, the remote control is in the way. So let's close that window. And there's my TL common. I'm going to drag that up to my levels panel. So now I've got my. Uh, Ava camera, if I look at my outliner, I've got everything that was in that common level is now uh, embedded as a sub-level here in this new uh, text boolean demo. So I'll double click persistent level to make sure everything I add from here on out is added to the uh, text boolean and I might as well do a control shift S to save all. And finally, uh, let's go ahead and make sure we are in motion design mode and make sure we are looking through our uh, avalanche cine camera. Okay, so at this point we are ready to add some objects. I'm going to start with the uh, rectangle that I'm going to remove, uh, you know, basically engrave the text into. So I'll double click on rectangle. Uh, let's make sure that we are in free mode and not XY locked. So this way I can make this a bit wider. Uh, I also want to go into the details and just make sure I am using the unlit material. That way we'll get some nice shadows in there. And uh, that's it for shape. I mean, you can make this as uh, complicated as you like. I'm just gonna leave it simple for this tutorial and uh, control shift S to do a save all. And finally, I'm ready to add some text. And so I'll go to my actors and double click on text actor. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our motion design panel and select that text actor. And I'll just say, uh, hello students here in the uh, text field. Hello, students. And let's go ahead and center that. And I'll just move that down a little bit. So we've got that kind of in the middle of this rectangle. All right, we want this rectangle not to be flat. We want it to have some volume. So I'm going to go ahead and select the rectangle, go into the operator stack panel. And again, if you don't have that displayed, you'll go to window and choose operator stack. This only appears when you have the uh, motion design plugin on. So uh, you want to make sure that all of that stuff is activated, of course. And uh, we're going to add a modifier, not an animator, a modifier. And this modifier will be the extrude modifier. So by default, this is extruding 30 centimeters. It's going backward into the scene and uh, that's perfectly fine. So the front face of this is going to be staying at the zero location in X front to back. So uh, that's where we know the front face is. And uh, the operator here of extrude gave us a, you know, basically a rectangle that goes in volume backwards. And if I want to take a look at that, I can go to um, my uh, camera button here in the viewport and choose default viewport. So now I'm looking through the perspective camera and if I hold alt and left click, I can now move to the side. Interesting. You can see the text object here. It's not Boolean subtracting. This is just the flat text object. So if I click that text actor and bring it in front, you can see how that's kind of floating in front. And you can also see how this is um, sending uh, the uh, extrusion to the back. Okay, so um, we also want to set this rectangle as being the Boolean target. So again, we're in the uh, operator stack modifiers, adding a modifier, I'm gonna choose Boolean for this, and this will be the target for channel zero, and that's perfectly fine. So let's work on the text actor. We'll go ahead and select the text actor, go to details and uh, scroll through here to find our 
extrusion. Here it is, extrude geometry. And I will extrude that by 30 as well. Now that also extruded to the back. It's extruding closer to the uh, rectangle. So I'm just going to click and drag this so that it's intersecting with that rectangle. And finally, uh, you'd think that we would want to be able to just uh, set a Boolean subtract modifier, except when we go to our operator stack and add modifier, wait, there's no Boolean. So one little step is we have to create uh, the dynamic mesh converter first. So under modifiers, add modifier for the text actor, we're going to create dynamic mesh converter. And now that that's been applied, we click on add modifiers and sure enough, we've got our Boolean modifier. With that, we'll change this from being the target to being subtract. And now we should be engraving that text into the rectangle. Wonderful, and uh, that's all good. And finally, I can switch back to uh, uh, motion graphics display mode, motion design viewport. And now we're looking through the camera and we can see that engraved text. Now, as of this recording, I am currently running Unreal 541. And there is a little bit of a glitch with this Boolean that I've noticed in that if I select the text actor and go to details and write in some new text, like testing one, two, three, and hit enter, uh, I'm not seeing a change here. Uh, it's not an issue too much, really. Uh, I can just go to the operator stack and for the whole stack, just disable the stack and then re-enable it. And that seems to... Uh, kick the modifiers into gear and uh, gets the uh, boolean working again. So hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.